Hello everyone, this is Gavin, and welcome back to my Let's Play of the Baldur's Gate Trilogy. In this episode, we'll be doing Brynlaw and the first level of Spellhold. As you can see, now that we have our fighter levels back and we have the Staff of the Magi, uh, we're super, super strong. Yes, you have excellent. The ship awaits. Good luck to you. I hope we all find what we are awakened, child. It is time for another. To be quite honest, the only thing we're really lacking right now is Mordekin and Sword. Um, as of recording this, I'm about two and a half, three hours ahead of this uh, ga of gameplay, and I still don't have Mordekin and Sword. I can't, for the life of me, figure out where to find it. Maybe you can buy it or find it in Usnatha. I'm I'm really hoping so, because uh, that's where we're at. You are nearly ready for her, Eloy. She will be pleased. This shall be your ship to the other. Uh, never a fear nor worry should cross your thoughts this evening, my lord. I have good many times, and I foresee now. Baron Linvale has proven trustworthy. You are soon under sail with the flamboyant Samon Haveri. We have arrived, and in good time, I might add. Congratulatory remarks for all the crew, and to our visitors for their delight. Mm -hmm. Give me some direction. For the past few episodes, I've kind of been struggling to find out, or figure out what to talk about. Because for the most part, everything is completely the same like all my tactics have been the same and will be the same for quite some time uh, really the only gear we're hoping for is I don't know just the staff of the rim from watchers keep uh, maybe a couple things like there's a fire dagger that's completely unnecessary but I'm going to buy in uh, in Usnatha um, we're gonna get our important spells like time stop and um, Whatever you're after. horrid wilting uh, in the underdark those are guaranteed um, yeah really I apologize that I don't have as much insightful commentary about Baldur's Gate 2 than I that I did about Baldur's Gate 1 but really uh, there's just not much to talk about right now waiting it's done so you saw that I finally did the familiar um, I'm sure some of you were upset with me that I wasn't um, but I really have not come into any situations where that extra 15 HP would have saved me I honestly doubt that I will ever come to a point where that happens, but I figured I might as well give myself that little bit of boost, especially since we'll have the bag of holding almost almost immediately. It'll be here in the next, you know, 5-10 minutes. Uh, so my inventory management issues will be non-existent from here on out. And that's really the only reason I haven't uh, summoned a familiar yet. Ordinarily, when I'm playing with a party, I summon the familiar in, um, oh shoot, what is it called? Uh, Nalia's keep, the Dearnize hold, I'll summon it there because you get a free find familiar scroll in the room where you craft the flail of ages. Hello. 
that character there named Callahan, he says that he knows you from something. So I'm guessing you run into him in Boulder's Gate 1, but I don't remember him at all. I've played that game no more times than I can count, probably. But if you've been keeping up with the series, as you probably have, you can see my general playstyle very fast. Um, not, I'm not a completionist at all. I'm trying to remember why you would ever need that um, that guild hall pass into like the Cortisons area area over there. Um, it's been so long since I've done any other path other than killing this mage in here uh, that I I really am unfamiliar with the way the game goes. I'm the sort of person that if I find something that works, I stick with it, and this guy is not a problem at all. In the name of the council, I am here to keep order. Scream. Yeah. Hold still. And you can see how easily I can take out mages with the Staff of the Magi, um, with the Dispel effects ability and it just becomes easier from here on out. I hope this is worth it. Scream. And I'll comment on why it becomes easier once we get there. So I don't know if I'm ever going to need this book of infinite spells. It's more handy for um, characters that aren't magic users. I think the best spell I've ever gotten from it is probably True Sight. It's reasonably helpful. Um, I know there's other other spells that you can get from it, I'm just not really familiar with it. Spell turning might be better even for some characters. I hope this is Excellent day for whatever you're at. It looks like I thought so too. <laughs> I apologize, it's been at least a week since I've uh, I've done this. So I, I'm a little bit forgetful of what I was doing at the time. Even as a level 13 fighter, I'm still hitting really often. 
Like I hit that air elemental on a roll of a two. Uh, that's that's really good. I'm sure I'll I'll start to feel the effects of not leveling up as a fighter later on. Uh, but at that point, I'll be such a powerful mage, it, it should stop mattering so much. This is, is no one foresaw it, but with study we can. This is not, somehow he retains his spell casting abilities, however, and is incre This she does not sleep much. The last solo playthrough where I played as a mage, uh, I was a swashbuckler mage dual class, so I didn't really have the luxury of just going up and beating the hell out of everyone. Uh, so I'm I'm a little bit unfamiliar with the tactics. Like I've never played the Kensai Mage. Um, oh, this is a little Easter egg. I'm sure some of you have seen it before. But he gives you a recipe. I have no idea why. Lastly, so empty. She does not seem willing to respond. Right? Oh, you miss. I knew you would seek her, and so the path was difficult but not impossible. All designed to test your potential. Well, it would seem that now, but don't worry. You won't have to think about any of this or that. Your life ends today. Do not within. Find me within. Yeah, I'm there. You cannot fight alone. You cannot. Find me within. Fall to your knees. You can do You cannot run from yourself. You cannot defeat yourself. I am the blood. I am yeah. the instinct. <laughs> So I decided to give my wisdom there. Um, it really depends on what kind of character you have, um, what what stat you want to give up. No, not again. Well, you are a strong one indeed. I have drained you. Drained? No. The curb body. Of course. I bid you farewell, child of Baal. We shall not meet again. And so your life does come to an end. You have proven resilient beyond all expectation. It is appealing to me. So losing those ball spawn powers is a little bit annoying because I lose drop on Holy Might, uh, and I use that quite often. Uh, that increase in strength is a significant boost to your damage per second and your ability to hit enemies. It'll become a little bit mitigated later because I pick up a good strength um, belt or, or whatever you call it, a girdle. Ordinarily, it's the, the strength belt that you use to craft the Chrome Fair, but I'm not going to craft the Chrome Fair because I want to use that belt, and I don't remember where you get the upgrade. If it's in Watcher's Keep, then potentially I'll, I'll uh, swap out for it, but I have a feeling that it's in um, Yagashura's area in Throne of Ball. And here I make a mistake. I thought that was a regular old gem in there, but uh, now I realize it was uh, one of them that you need to do the magic mirror. So I got off of that page for prismatic uh, prismatic spray really quickly, so you probably didn't have a chance to, to read what it does. But the minimum damage it possibly can do is 10, uh, which is if the enemy does a save versus spell. Um, the maximum it can do is 80 if they fail it, and they uh, the spell obviously has all of those really good effects. I believe prismatic spray can affect your party, which is the reason why most people don't use it very often. Uh, but I obviously don't have a party, so it's a non-issue for me. Give me some direction. 
Although as soon as I get Mordekane and Sword, I'm not going to be bothering with it at all. Scream. Scream for mercy. So I have very little to say about these uh, these riddles, either in this room or in the other. Um, they're fairly fairly self-explanatory. If you're having trouble with them, then you can pause the video at any time, and obviously just look at what the answers. I don't get any wrong.
out of concern. This is worth it. So I always thought it was sort of interesting that um, the Berserk is a red spell, uh, meaning that it's an offensive spell, but it doesn't break your invisibility. Um, I don't know why it would be red. I, I guess because it, it improves your damage or something. But, I don't know, I guess some of the some of the spell colors don't make any sense. So that projected image is quite good. You can uh, you can use it to do some cheese with uh, chain contingencies, uh, with regular contingencies, because your character becomes uh, immobilized. So if you put uh, a chain contingency with the with the trigger as uh, helpless, and then you cast on yourself, then you can you can use any number of of uh, contingencies with it. And then if you have more than one uh, projected image memorized, or if you have a scroll of it in your uh, in your quick slot, then you can continually do those chain contingencies. Um, ordinarily, the the one that is quite popular is mislead, I think, plus two Morden Cannon swords, um, or or you can do a project image plus two Morden Cannon swords. I've never personally done it. I just know that it's possible that there's a there's an infinite combination there or something. And I guess the only other minuscule issue with um, losing my ball spawn powers is that I don't have the cure light wounds anymore. So each time I rest it takes a tiny bit more time. So right there you saw that I have the, the good um, animate dead skeletons now, the ones that are nearly immune to magic. Uh, so I can cast anything on them while they're tanking the enemy. I believe they have quite a bit of health as well. I'm sure someone out there knows the exact exact stats for it, but that person is not me. So I'm sure some of you are getting annoyed with me continually casting um, or erasing spells and re-memorizing them, but it just makes so much sense to do so because 
that that experience adds up really quickly. Another huge benefit for this uh, Staff of the Magi that is not listed in any stat is that you can cast those AoE spells and then uh, go in invisible immediately and your, uh, um, your AoE spells will not take aggro of the enemies that are taking damage from them because they don't know where you are. Uh, I don't know whether that's a glitch in the game that they do aggro on you, but um, it just eliminates a lot of issues. So I was trying to think of what makes these uh, these liches spawn rather than the other uh, possible outcome like you saw in the, the shadow stronghold or whatever it's called. I believe the trigger is having one party member that's level 15 in any class. So if, if you were, let's say, a level 15 berserker, then you would be getting these lich encounters. And now that I'm a level 15 mage, I've been getting them as well. But it's actually a very good thing because, um, well, they're worth a lot of experience. I think the liches by themselves are worth 22,000 or something similar. wondered why there were there were so many um, arrows there were so many things yeah. in this area that are good for well Imowen in particular uh, but it, I didn't make the connection that this area is obviously incentivizing you to take Imowen and then give her all these great spells that you're finding and give her all these good arrows that she can shoot um, yeah it's just incentivizing you to take Imowen and they give you the means to make her useful immediately. Uh, it's really good game design. And it doesn't feel contrived at all, really. So I had never used Power Word Stun before, and I still use it very rarely, um, but I had no idea it was quite that good. Um, anything with 89 or less HP gets stunned immediately, and that, that's current HP, so you can use it on anything um, that can't resist it with Magic Resist. I haven't had the occasion to use this tactic yet, but I'm thinking that um, casting Time Stop and then staggering your um, your spell casts plus uh, plus your melee attacks, so you can get in your, your three attacks uh, plus a spell cast in the same round. Uh, that's probably the most efficient way to to deal damage to an to an enemy. I think I'm gonna try it on Fur Crag. Try to cast time stop immediately, uh, go in, wail on him for three attacks, and then 
and then cast lower resistance, do it over again, cast lower resistance, um, and then repeat as necessary. Um, I'm thinking that I might be able to kill him before he even has a chance to attack me. Uh, the only thing that might throw a kink into my plans is if he has uh, something up like like improved mantle, mantle protection from magic weapons. Um, although I do have a weapon that hits as a plus five, so I, I don't remember how that affects uh, any of that. So this is essentially the end of this episode, thank you for watching, and uh, obviously we will be continuing with Spellhold in the next one.